how did the concept evolve first up let's talk about the concept of i am an aerospace engineer and professor of aerospace engineering at iit madras and uh, my specialization is propulsion uh, so i have been working on propulsion in jet engines and rockets for all my life so far at least about five years until five years back then so i suddenly realized that automobiles are becoming electric from ic engines so i wanted to ask what is it that's happening in aircraft can aircraft also become electric and i found that there were already quite a few people who were trying to do this and uh, so i said let me also jump in and try to start doing it myself okay so is it is it to do with the uh, mobility problems that that we face in daily life that yeah kind of so whatever i said so far is actually a technical side right then comes on the progress so if you want to do something technological you want to actually find out what is the use case you're trying to solve for and it so happens that electric aircraft cannot go too far in terms of range because of current limitation on that piece right so we have actually looked at what is the short distance for which people would be interested in flying and that happens to be city traffic uh, to to work out and in which case you can't have that base so you have to have electric to be vertical vertical take off and landing to be right. done so that is essentially the reason why we have this new kind of aircraft for ev cars um, we are so we get to make this because there is a business need from a use case that we have now okay uh in terms of the material that has been used to uh, to uh, to you know build this product i mean i believe composite structures right. so one of the things that i did first when i wanted to electric aircraft was to study what is going on in the field hmm. it turns out that that not many people had papers and all those things mostly it was in conferences and uh, i got to put all that together and one of the things that a professor does if he wants to learn something is to teach it so i actually taught a full semester long course on this that very early on in the course so i had to structure the course getting all the material together and one thing that i learned was that if you were making an electric aircraft you have to at least start from scratch and do a more of 21st century plane rather than a 20th century plane. most of the planes that are that we today start seeing are like more like designed in the 20th century the reason is you need to be extremely aerodynamic we also be very very like wait for an electric aircraft to extend its range mm. so the equations actually give you that information okay so we got to go back to carbon composites instead of the usual aluminum frame and redesign entire aerodynamics particularly for the vtol uh, for the vertical rotors are used mm. aerodynamics is not so difficult easy okay. uh, because vertical rotors come in the way of the flow uh, and so on so we have to actually work a lot on the physics of The, the, the flight of these aircraft and also the structure mm-hmm. and the material and the weight among this so could you give us a walk through in terms of the, of the aircraft if you can give us a walk through around the aircraft right so what we are seeing here is what we call as a uh, vtol fixed wing hybrid so what does it mean is we have vertical rotors in the front and the back of the wing uh, you probably can't see it from here you just have to climb on the Look behind the behind the wing for the vertical rotors at the back. So these vertical rotors allow you to take off like a drone, and your fixed wing allows you to fly like a plane. Oh. This one. And. Uh, so when when we fly like a plane the wing actually supports the aerodynamic lift generation that balances the weight of the aircraft so you don't need the vertical rotors to be spinning all the time and consuming power so you can save a lot of power to overcome only the wind resistance and how much you have this forward propulsion that is fairly minimal in terms of power consumption right. that way you can actually extend the range and start using the vertical rotors again for a vertical descent mm. right so we have a very unique Um, IP here on how we are actually positioning the vertical rotors with respect to the wing in making the wing the most compact in the world, right. uh, so that we can land and take off in very tight spaces. We don't need like very large helipads kind of uh, places for this, so that people can actually go up to their rooftops, uh, terraces, and then get this. 
two seater. It's a two seater. So we wanted to first do a two seater, first with a pilot and a single passenger. Because most uh, taxi rides are actually single passenger rides. And we wanted to target the market and still keep the aircraft as compact as possible so that we can get people habituated to having the plane come near to them and then pick them up and then go. And they don't have to actually wait for other seats to get filled up with other passengers coming in. So we don't want to have a share, a ride share model. We want to have like a uh, uh, customized model, right? So your students, uh, IIT students, were involved, actively involved in this process? Initially, of... yes, uh, okay. when we were actually bootstrapping. But subsequently, we have been able to raise funds and then uh, hire full-time uh, people. And some of them are IIT, my own students, hmm. who have done PhD with me and so on. And, uh, but a lot of other uh, other institutions, other IITs, and uh, uh, mostly we are also deriving people with some experience in the aero industry uh, from uh, NAL or DRDO and uh, other uh, MNCs. And so okay. Uh, in, with regards to uh, you know your flight testing, how far has that progressed? <laughs> we have made a subscale prototype, which is there in the other IDEX hall. Okay. And once we have finished with this show, we will take that back for flight testing. So that is about a three meter okay, in uh, dimensions, both sides. Mm. And uh, that's almost close to this in terms of propulsion, architecture and so on. So in the next few weeks, we will actually be starting to do the flight testing of it. We already started doing the um, ground testing of it, right? The hover test right. and then a, uh, a cruise test and all the stuff, putting one from a truck and driving. All of those things. So that we can tune the flight controller for these different modes of flight. Once we go back, we will actually resume them and uh, start doing the flight test in about two, one or two weeks. So, what kind of a you know uh, timeline are, are you setting for? For this, we are looking at another six to seven months uh, timeline for the first prototype. And uh, we already started the uh, certification process for this. Uh, and the certification process starts with a design certification and. Uh, so uh, that has been initiated and once we get the first prototype out by let's say next August or September, we should uh, commence the flight test and then start doing further prototyping and do multiple flight tests of all those prototypes in the, so, in the following year. So in terms of uh, eventually, eventual cost per unit, is there, is there anything, is there, is there a ballpark figure where we, which you have kind of... Yeah, we are trying to position this to somewhere between two to three times the current to the for a typical distance of let's say about 20 kilometers. Okay. That, that would be very useful for using something like this. Right. Uh I mean, uh, something I noticed, I mean, yes, it's a two-seater, but is there a storage area available? Yeah, there, is, there is storage area behind. Behind, sir. Okay. So, it, 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 will like, it, it will be like some kind of a personal car, like a taxi. Okay. Right, you get in, you have your storage space, you put your luggage. So the VTOL technology gives you the option of you know taking off from the spot itself, Absolutely. right? You don't need a runway. No, you don't need a runway. Okay. And in terms of, so how do you think this will uh, kind of solve the mobility issue? Yeah, so uh, the asset utilization of this is actually very huge. Hmm. When a typical taxi on a daily basis, uh, if, it, if it's doing let's say about a 20-30 kilometer kind of trip, right, all the time, uh, it will probably be able to do not more than about five trips a day, so five to maximum of ten trips a day. Right. Whereas uh, we can expect to have like about forty trips done with this. In which case, uh, in including charging times and all that stuff. So in which case, uh, we do we need like a lot lesser number of planes than uh, taxis on the road. Okay. Uh, and each such uh, air taxi can take people within about ten minutes to fifteen minutes. And it's going to take like about one and a half to two hours there. Mm -hmm. So productivity of people will be increased. Reliability and certainty of reaching your destination is more more. And because you will have fixed flight paths to travel, there is no uncertainty of traffic in the air and all that stuff. You will have right of way. So everything put together, this is going to actually be like a game changer as far as the uh, city traffic scenario is concerned. Okay. And in terms of the, uh, the indigenous uh, components being used in this? The entire app frame is actually designed and made by us. Okay. So we actually have a class 7 clean room for aero grade material production uh, for, so that we can get certification on it. And uh, uh, so we make the entire app frame ourselves. 
We import cells to make the batteries ourselves. Right now we are importing motors. We make our own propellers and all that stuff ourselves. Mm. Um, but in the future we could actually start looking at making motors or getting motors manufactured in India. Right? Cell manufacturing, we got to see who comes up with it. And, and uh, Avion access, I think the standard components there are Indian vendors as well as foreign vendors. We do a mix of both. Mm. It's contingent on what can be easily certified. That's what we are basically looking at. But all in all said, there's like about a 70 to 80 percent in the message. Okay, that's great. That's nice. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. All the very best for your endeavor. Thank you so much. If you like this video, please like, share and subscribe to our channel.